Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Oscar. And today we're continuing our series talking about MindGPT, which is our project to create a large language model which answers questions about mental health. Today's topic is monitoring. Monitoring is super important for any large language model. We have complex, unpredictable behavior from these models. So we want to know whether the responses we're getting make sense and are of a decent quality. That's really important though when we're talking about mental health related questions where we're really interested to know are the responses our users are getting. So I guess we start, Oscar, with what things can we monitor for, for these models? What can we get out of them? Yeah, so before we actually start implementing any of the monitoring component, we first need to figure out what are the metrics that we want to monitor for. So there are things such as the data quality, like what's the percentage of, let's say, long character is in the data set, or is there embedding drift in the data set? So another thing we can monitor for is the model, like the prediction quality. For example, how relevant is the response returned by the model compared to the answer? Does the response even make any sense? Stuff like that. And how readable the response is? So the readability of the model is also an important metric that we can monitor for. Okay, yeah, so we've got data where we're looking at the inputs for the model and how that might have, have changed over time. But then we're also looking at the model output, the readability of the response, as, as you say. Or just looking for, like you say, non-letter characters. By that, we mean nonsense that might make its way exactly. into the response, right? Bad characters, yeah. things like that, yeah. And you talk about drift. Now, that's one of the things that's particularly interesting for large language models because we are dealing with text data. So it's not obvious how to get a notion of what it means for the data or the output to drift. So you said embedding drift. How does that work? So the way that a large language model understands the data, the text data we're giving it is by embeddings. So what embeddings is, it's just a factor representation of a piece of text. So that's how the model understand the meaning of our data set. So embedding drift happens when the new data set that we collected is really different to the old data set that we have originally collected. So when that happens, it might be a signal that it's time to retrain our model or retune our model or just have a look on what are the differences between the new data set that we have collected and the old data set. Does it actually still focus on the same topic? Is it still relevant to mental health? So basically in mining drift is like data drift, but for tax data. Now it's worth adding that these kinds of drift metrics, they can't necessarily tell you what has gone wrong in the data or that anything has gone wrong but they give you an indication that something has changed either in the content or the structure. And that's something that a human being should be looking at to make a decision as to whether the, the model needs retraining, right? Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. So far, we've talked about automated metrics like data quality, the readability, and the embedding drift. But I know a lot of people are talking about humans in the loop when it comes to large language models. How could we incorporate human feedback into this monitoring solution? Yeah, so one of the best ways to improve the model response is actually by getting some feedback from the user. Mm -hmm. So that's actually something we're planning to do for MindGPT. So the way we're going to do it is to let the user to, to rate the response that they get from the model. So if the response is good or they find it useful, so they could give like a thumbs up. If they don't, or the responses doesn't really make any sense, they could give a thumbs down. So after they rate the response, we will ask them whether they want to share the question and the response they got from the sure. model. Yeah. And that, that asking them is really important because it, there's a privacy consideration as well, right? Yeah, that's right. So we will have to ask them, but is that something that they're willing to share? So if they do, then we are going to collect the question and whether the response was helpful or not useful, we will still collect it, which will help us to use those data to help to improve our model. 
Okay, thanks, Oscar. And if you want to read the full details of how we've implemented monitoring for MindGPT, Oscar and Josh have written a detailed blog explaining everything, and we'll share the link below. For now, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye. See you. Why is the ending the hardest thing? I don't know. It's probably you. Maybe you're <laughs> rushing it.